Alu gobi is a classic Indian dish featuring potatoes and cauliflower, but restaurant versions can be a little underwhelming. So I've challenged myself to make a better than restaurant quality version at home. And to see if I've succeeded, later we'll head over to my parents' house and serve it to them in a blind taste test. Let's get into it. For the alu or potatoes, I'm using a pound of Yukon Gold potatoes, which are somewhat waxy and somewhat starchy. No need to peel them, just give them a nice wash and scrub and then we'll cut them into roughly one inch pieces. They're definitely not going to be the same size, which is totally fine. If you can't find Yukon Golds, you can also use russet potatoes. And for the gobi or cauliflower, ideally you want a small to medium sized head. I like to break the cauliflower down by first stripping away the leaves and then cutting out the bottom core. From here, it is really easy to pick off the florets with your hands. For big florets, make sure to cut them into small to medium sized florets and if they have a flat side, they're gonna brown even better. Most traditional alu gobi recipes will have you steam saute the cauliflower and potatoes in the same pot with everything else. Honestly, it usually ends up kind of soggy and not that flavorful. When it comes to restaurant versions, they often pre-cook the cauliflower and potatoes in a deep fryer. The result is greasy and oily, and it doesn't even stay crispy, which is the whole point of deep frying, so totally not worth it in my opinion. So what I do instead is I roast the potatoes and the cauliflower in the oven. They roast at the same time, you don't need to flip them, so it's super hands-off, and while it's not traditional, it tastes delicious. And you can use that downtime to work on the second part of the dish, which is the masala. You do want to roast the cauliflower and potatoes on separate sheet pans, that way they have enough space to do their thing and get nice and brown and don't end up steaming. Since potatoes tend to stick, I lined their pan with parchment paper, but for cauliflower, you actually end up getting better browning if you don't line the pan. We're gonna pop these in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 Celsius for 22 to 25 minutes. No need to flip them. So while those are in the oven, we're gonna work on our masala, which is basically a blend of spices, aromatics, and tomatoes and it forms the saucy base to a lot of Indian recipes. We'll start our masala off by dicing one medium yellow onion, and if it makes you cry, make sure you get your loving partner to bring you a tissue. Now you're gonna put your back into it and peel six garlic cloves, finely chop those up, and then finely chop an inch of ginger. Like the potatoes, this ginger has already been washed, so I don't bother peeling it, because peeling it is annoying. We are ready to start cooking the masala, so heat up a few tablespoons of oil in a deep saute pan over medium high. Once it's shimmering, you'll add in a halved cinnamon stick and one and a half teaspoons of cumin seeds. What we're doing here is blooming the whole spices, which deepens their flavor. Cinnamon is a little unconventional in this dish, but it adds this amazing special warmth that I really love. Toast these for about a minute until they're darker in color. Make sure to stir frequently or they will burn and you'll have to start over. This is looking good, so let's add in the onion we diced earlier, plus a pinch of salt, which helps to release some of the water in the onions and helps them brown more quickly. Let that cook down until we start to see some browning about eight minutes. We have some downtime while the onion cooks, so we're gonna use that to chop a half pound of tomatoes. I am finely chopping these because I want them to melt into the masala. And if you like some heat, grab a serrano pepper or other green chili. I want a fairly gentle heat in this dish so it's not overwhelming. So rather than chopping it up like I would for a curry, I'm just gonna make a small slit in the middle. If you want more heat, make a bigger slit. Whenever you're sauteing onions, if you feel like they're drying out or starting to get too brown on the edges, just add a splash of water, just a little bit. The steam is going to kind of bring down the temperature so they don't burn and they don't dry out. Now that the onions are done, go ahead and add the garlic and ginger we just prepped, plus a half teaspoon of turmeric and a quarter teaspoon of asafoetida. This is technically an optional ingredient, but I would encourage you to visit your local Indian grocery store or to buy it online. It smells funky. That is from the asafoetida. It's also known as hing in Hindi. It's kind of hard to describe what flavor this adds, but I think of it as like this superpower umami powder used in Indian cooking that can take a dish from like an eight out of 10 to a 10 out of 10. It is super pungent Ooh. and funky though, so use just a little bit. Make sure to stir this frequently for one to two minutes, and now add in the remaining ingredients for the masala. The tomatoes, including any juices, which will help us deglaze the pan, the serrano pepper, plus a few more ground spices. 
a teaspoon of mild Indian chili powder, two teaspoons of ground coriander, and one and a half teaspoons of Amchur powder. Amchur is another one of those optional but recommended spices. If you can get it, you can find it at your local Indian grocery store or online. And it's the dried powder from unripe green mangoes. And it's often used in Indian cuisine to add a tangy flavor. I think of it as like lemon juice without the liquid and a little bit more complex in flavor. Oops, I forgot to film this, but you're also gonna add some salt and pepper here to season and let everything simmer for about five minutes or until the tomatoes have softened and started to really melt into the masala. Our cauliflower and potatoes should be ready by now, so let's go check on those. The texture should be tender, but not soft. You don't want them to fall apart in the dish. Roasting the vegetables is not traditional in olive gobi, but after my fifth or sixth test of trying to do it the traditional way, I was just pretty underwhelmed with the flavor results. It also kind of took a long time. And so I thought, why don't I just cook the potatoes and cauliflower like I normally do, which is to roast them in the oven, add so much good flavor, as you can see, absolutely beautiful, browned perfectly. Also, I uh, learned that Priya Krishna makes her olive gobi this way. And so I feel like I'm in good company because she is fabulous. Go ahead and toss the potatoes and cauliflower into this gorgeous masala, but try to be gentle. You don't want to accidentally mash them, although Indian mashed potatoes do sound extremely delicious. Onto our final spices, I'm adding fenugreek leaves, which like the asafoetida and umchur, are technically optional, but highly recommended. They add this bold, savory, pungent flavor that you can't really replicate with anything else. And since we're going for better than restaurant quality, I can't leave them out. Also adding a half teaspoon of garam masala. And if you want that final rich, indulgent mouthfeel and flavor, go ahead and add a pat or two of vegan butter. All right, turn off the heat and let everything cool down for five minutes. In the meantime, chop up a big handful of cilantro. Don't toss those tender stems, they are just as delicious. Add that in alongside a squeeze of lime juice or lemon juice. If you didn't add the umchur powder earlier, add a little bit more citrus juice to compensate. Remove the cinnamon stick and that big boy serrano pepper and season with more salt or garam masala as desired. This is so good, but is it better than restaurant quality? To answer that question, I'm gonna serve it to my parents in a blind taste test alongside a restaurant version of aloe gobi. During my recipe development research, I ordered aloe gobi from five well-rated Indian restaurants. Honestly, none of them wowed me, but I picked the one that was least offensive to try to make this a fair comparison. So if my parents end up picking the restaurant version, I will be the biggest failure in Indian cooking history. As usual, things got a little weird once I arrived. Now this looks like hot sexy mama. <laughs> Don't take pictures, I'm fixing my breath. Mmm! Pineapple. Okay, that's a pregnant pet. Suck it in. <laughs> Suck it in. Not like that incredible hunk. Did I say hunk? Oh, hulk. hunk. I mean hulk. I don't mind either. All right, ready? Hi everyone, welcome to our aloo gobi taste test. If you haven't met my parents, these are them. These are them. Hello. Hi, hi Nisha. <laughs> hi, say hi to the camera, not to me. Hi Nisha, the beautiful, <laughs> talented, great vegan chef. We are so proud of my little girl who is still a little baby for me. Have you guys eaten aloo gobi before? Oh gobi? yes. Many so times, many I'm times. sure you have. Have you had it at a restaurant recently or do you make it at home? We have eaten once in a while at restaurant, but mostly at home. She cooks with a lot of oil. <laughs> no, I don't put a lot of oil. She so... will boil the potato. No, and... Deepak, I don't boil the potato. <laughs> Okay. So let me give my recipe instead of having a sub recipe person here. All right. Well, I have two different versions here for you today. One is from a restaurant and one I have prepared myself. So you're going to try both of them and let me know what you think. This all right. The potatoes I would have cut smaller they're huge cauliflower has become too soft flavor wise it's okay cauliflower is messed up like it's mashy like mushy let's go here crisp cauliflower look at that but cooked this is not as spicy as this but it has some different flavor that i like i can't figure out either 
It's very good. Potato and cauliflower, good size, cooked very good. So it's still crispy, but not too soft. Taste is very good. Testing, we are not eating as a lunch though. I love it, even though it's not very spicy. So would you want like more chili peppers in this? A little more. It's the perfect texture. I'll have to finish the whole bowl. If you had to pick, would you be happy with either? Do you have a preference for one? I would pick this one and put my... Spicy pickle on top? Oh, this is perfect, but I would put a little more spicy Ooh, chili oil on top. Nice. Do you have uh, a preference between the two? I like this one. You like this one? Texture-wise, flavor-wise. This has become mushy. This tastes like... Typical restaurant type. Okay, well that's that's a great segue. That is from the restaurant. This one is mine. Hey. Great. Oh, hey. I'm gonna Just put like little spicy happened. chili oil. It does look nice. That is what the Indians love. Not all the Indians, okay? <laughs> it is good with chili oil, I will admit it, it. It does taste better when it's spicy, but everybody cannot tolerate it. They are not Indians then. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, folks, you heard it here. If you're looking for a delicious, even better than restaurant quality, alu gobi, check out the recipe. It's linked in the description box below. Thank you to my wonderful parents okay. for joining oh, me for our you, taste thank test. Thank you for and having us. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.